I have always been fascinated by the Galapagos Islands ever since I heard about them in school. After the Ecuador video I published last week, I couldn't help myself but to explore these islands. Hope you enjoy watching and learning about this one of a kind place on the planet. Galapagos Islands and the surrounding waters are called living museum and showcase of evolution. It has been designated as a natural world heritage site and biosphere reserve. 97% of the land is protected. Some of us can only experience the Galapagos Islands through pictures and videos. Few of us may be able to get to visit the islands. Cruising around the islands will cost you upwards of $8,000 per person. But if you are a nature lover and determined, there are economical ways to visit the island without breaking a bank. So don't dismiss this place because of budget yet. We will look at how you can see the islands on a budget later in the video. But first, learn about this wonderful place. First of all, I want to set the expectation right. If you are expecting a tropical paradise, you will be disappointed. Most of the islands are devoid of vegetation and few of them look like moon than Hawaii. Galapagos Islands are part of Ecuador. It is an archipelago of volcanic islands. They are distributed on either side of the equator on the Pacific Ocean, about 900,000 kilometers west of continental Ecuador. The Galapagos Islands are known for their large number of endemic species that were studied by Charles Darwin. His observation and collection contributed to the inception of Darwin's theory of evolution by means of natural selection. The Galapagos Archipelago covers the land area of about 7,900 square kilometers. It's about the size of Delaware, spread across 45,000 square kilometers of ocean. The largest island is Isabella, makes up about three quarters of the total land area. The archipelago consists of 18 big islands, three small islands and 107 rocks. It is the second largest archipelago in the world after Malay Archipelago, which has over 25,000 islands. Even though the Galapagos Islands are on the Pacific Ocean, its exotic landscape doesn't resemble any other Pacific island. They are rather arid with huge lava fields, rock formations, cacti forest and many volcanic cones. Some of the uninhabited and naked islands are look like they are from another planet. Ongoing seismic and volcanic activities reflect the process that form the islands. The islands experience more volcanic activities than Hawaii. Only four of the Galapagos Islands are inhabited by humans. Population is about 25,000. About three quarters of them live in Santa Cruz. Biggest town is Porto Yora. Other inhabited islands are San Cristobal, Isabella Island and Floriana Island. The Galapagos Islands have a beautiful island vibe where people move more slowly, the environment is more relaxed and people are friendly and outgoing. But that's not the reason to visit Galapagos, is it? One of the main reasons people visit the Galapagos Islands are to see the unique wildlife. But you don't have to go looking for them. You will bump into them. They are everywhere. Here are some highlights. These giant tortoises are usually high on most people list. Being one of the species most people associate with Galapagos. These are the largest living species of tortoises, with some modern Galapagos tortoises weighing up to 417 kg. In captive, they can live up to 177 years. Giant Tortoise Breeding Center is the best place to see them. They have almost 1000 tortoises in all stages of development. They stay in the center until they are large enough to survive in the wild alone. These Galapagos sea lions are fairly social. You can see them sunbathing on a sandy shore or rocks or gliding through the surf. They are the smallest sea lions. Galapagos penguins are endemic to the islands. It is the only penguin found north of the equator and they are the world's second smallest penguins. 
These marine iguanas are found only in the Galapagos Islands, unique among the modern lizard. It is the marine reptile that has the ability to forage food in the sea. Algae make up most of their diet. On the other hand, Galapagos land iguanas are the very large species of lizard found in the world. These are just a few species. It will take all day to go through the list of all the endemic species in the Galapagos. You can also spot thousands of bird species as well. These islands are great place for birding. We can ignore the vegetation of the island. About third of them are endemic. There are three unique bioregions: the arid zone, the humid highlands, and the coastal zone. Arid zone covers most of the islands and home to leafless shrubs and cacti like candelabra cactus and lava cactus. Humid highlands are rare and limited to larger islands with higher elevation. Home to many species of scalesia trees which are endemic to the islands. The coastal zone occupy a narrow area by the shoreline, notable for its many plant species which are tolerant to high salt. Mangrove trees are extremely common in the zone and play a crucial part in breeding of many bird species. Galapagos are also a melting pot of marine species. The underground craters and coral reefs are extraordinary. It is considered one of the seven underwater wonders in the world and one of the most fascinating place for deep sea diving. See, I can stop talking about these unique species, but I have to. So, let's discuss a little bit about how to get there and experience these wonderful islands for yourself. You can fly to Galapagos Islands either from Quito or Guayaquil. There are several flights daily. There are two main airport in the Galapagos Islands, one on Baltra off Santa Cruz and the other one is on San Cristobal Island. The round trip airfare to the island can range from 300 to 500 dollars. From here, you have basically three options depending on what you want to do. Option 1 is to set off on a cruise around the islands and island hopping. You can book a luxury 8-day cruise around the island starting from $8,000. There are budget-friendly options for 4 days. It costs about $1,500 to $2,000, but these are 2 to 3 star boats. Option 2 would be to visit 2 or 3 main islands and stay for 1, 2 or even 3 days and explore the islands that you are staying and maybe make day trips to smaller nearby islands. You can travel between the inhabited main islands by public speedboat and all of them has reasonably priced hotel. I personally prefer this option especially if you plan for a week or longer stay because you get to experience more. I highly recommend booking local tour guides. They are so knowledgeable and worth the price. This option will cost you about $1000 to $3000 for 5 to 7 days depending on your your choice of hotel and activities and meals. For this option it's important to do lots of research. Also don't make the mistake of thinking all the islands are the same. They are not. They vary widely in geography and biology. So do your research ahead of time and plan your perfect vacation on a budget. Option 3 would be to stay in Santa Cruz and explore Santa Cruz because they have couple of sanctuaries that you can visit or you can even take a day trips to nearby island. This could be great option if you are planning a short trip from let's say 1 to 3 days. Regardless of which option you choose, it is going to be a memorable one and one of the unique vacations that you ever had. The coast I provided are only a guideline to show that how accessible Galapagos have become in the past 20 years. If you have seen any of my other videos, I focus on learning of that place rather than visiting or vacation. But for Galapagos Island, I wanted to kind of give you guys the idea of the coast because most people think it is not achievable. You know, you cannot go. It's going to cost me ten thousand dollars. Two people, twenty. If it's family, forget about it. Forty thousand dollars. 
but it's, it's changed a lot it has become more accessible as they are building more places to stay and so on so i just wanted to point out if you really want to go and enjoy there are ways to go without breaking a bank hope you enjoyed learning about galapagos islands they are amazing isn't it so if you like this video give me a thumbs up and please subscribe to my channel I, i know i should ask you this more i don't but please subscribe to my channel it's been wonderful exploring the galapagos islands thank you so much for watching please give me your feedback and comments i appreciate them all thank you so much